What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm bringing you a much-anticipated Evade build. Now, I know you guys have seen this. There's been some other videos about it. But I wanted to make sure I got all my gear in the right spots in order to do this build for you guys. Because there's a lot of information that we have to go into. Um, I will do a showcase at the end, but we have a lot to cover. So this build will do 100s in 60 seconds or less. So we had to get this thing fully put together, upgrade everything, which is a bummer because, you know, resources are so bad this season. Hopefully in the mid-season update, they'll, they, um, they will give us some better stuff there. But anyway, so this is the evade build, guys. You guys already know. I know you guys have seen this. This is the evade build. Super, super strong. The build is absolutely insane. Um, it it destroys absolutely everything. So let's go over all the gills, gills, the gear, the skills, the paragon, and all the juicy details so you can get this build online so you can crush in your 300 paragon grind. So <clears throat> first things first, let's go ahead and go over our skills. So let's break this down. So this is an evade build. So we're going to be using the main thunder spike skill because all of our damage is going to come from our spirit hall, which I'll go over in just a second. So uh, we are putting points into thunder spike going into accelerated. So when we evade, we make stuff vulnerable, which is great. Nothing here in core, except we do have uh, one point in all of the passives courtesy of our chest piece. But we're going to come down. We're going to put points into vocal point just to get to apex. So we deal increased damage against vulnerable, double it against elites. Then we got Mirage. Mirage is very important because the more dodge chance that we have or the chance to dodge gives us more crit. And I'll go over the break points that you need to get to um, in just a minute. But we max this out. And then we also get unrestrained power. So while we're uns in unhindered or unstoppable, we deal more damage. <clears throat> then, of course, we just like the majority of a lot of Spiritborn builds. We got Ravager into Replenish. This gives us 40 stacks. It allows us to do more damage, which I think is fantastic. Then we're going to come down and we're going to grab a Patient Guard for more block chance. The more block chance that we have gives us more damage. We got Auspicious. So we uh, get a barrier. This is very important because we need a barrier um, not only to survive, but for some more damage, um, because we do not care about um, resistances at all in this build. Then we got Endurance for casting to get Vigor back, and then we got Perseverance for more damage per stack of Resolve, which is very important. We max this out. This is huge. Um, next, we got a point to Anti-Venom. This is just for Resistance, which is fine. Uh, we got Scourge, which is one of the main skills pretty much in every single build. It allows us to have some crowd control to slow them, and um, it does some more damage for crowd control, which I think is great. Then, of course, we got Counterattack. This increases our dodge chance, which gives us almost 100% chance to dodge, which is great while it's active. And then we can get a cooldown to reset it, and then we can do more damage. Um... Then we got Armor Hide. You need to max this out. This makes us unstoppable. And then this is going to give us more. Um, it's going to give us Thorns, but it's going to give us more block, dam uh, block damage reduction, which I think is great. And it gives us more Resolve, which is most important. We're going to be getting a crap ton of damage from Resolve. Last but not least, we got Concussive Stomp. This here is going to additionally give us a barrier. And this is what's going to give us a barrier to fill out this last bit of life here. You can see that I, I'm, I don't have a full barrier, but Stomp... Stomp gives me, like, fills my barrier up. So it gives us the last bit of barrier. See how my barrier just filled up? So when you stomp, Concussive Stomp hits an enemy, which is on our um, our runes. That's when we'll get that last bit of barrier, which is nice. You could do Earth and Bulwark if you really wanted to. I think con con Concussive Stomp works better. Because, one, it also knocks enemies down, so it gives us more damage, right? Um, let's go ahead and move this way so that we're not hearing all the uh, the attacks there. Uh, next, we got we max out Resilience for even more max life. Then we max out Brilliance for even more increased um, damage uh, based on our move speed. Acceleration for more evade charges, which is very important. Then, of course, Potent, which is in every build. Hitting enemies with a Jaguar skill increases our damage. We have two, three Jaguar skills. Very important. Next, we got Hunter, by far the best... Um, ultimate in the game for spearborn not only does it give us more stacks it does damage killing an enemy while hunter is active gives us a 40 percent chance to reset the cooldown so when it's done we can do it again the mobility of us jumping to places so when this is this is actually up you can actually just you know jump and get some distance on some enemies so it makes 
navigating pits even easier or dungeons. And then, of course, the 100% increased damage to injured enemies just finishes them off. Super powerful. Then we got resolution for damage, one point to spiritual attunement for more vigor, and then supremacy for more damage. Key passive is going to be adaptive stance. So we get all these bonuses as long as we're cycling through our different skills, which I think is fantastic. All right, um, into the gear, because this build is very gear dependent. Okay, very gear dependent. You will have some options here in some of the gear pieces. Again, we do not care about resistances whatsoever. You can see how bad mine are. I have not had an issue at all. I don't even die. So we don't care about resistance in any way, shape, or form. So, Shaco. Now, the first thing here is, is that you, to make this work perfectly, okay, so we rack up evade charges. So the more evade charges you have, the more that you can evade, right? And then you can teleport. If you want 100% um, evade cooldown, so where you never run out of evade charges, you need to have your cooldown at 69%. Okay, 69%. Mine's at 39. Now, this is different. This is how you calculate it. You're going to take the cooldown of Shaco and then times it by the evade. So you would go 1.31 equals the evade cooldown. So 39% times 1.319. That's what your total cooldown would be for evade. So I'm not at 69%. I'm short just a little bit because I also had to add it into my amulet for another 22%. And even with that, I'm still slightly short. The best and easiest way to solve this is to get a Shaco that has GA cooldown. And then you need to triple crit the cooldown. If you do that, all you got to do is, I think, get maybe 20% evade cooldown on the boots and you are capped. So do that, I don't have that, I only got a double crit, but right now it works fine, I never run out. Next, Shroud of False Death. The main reason that we do take this, we don't care about the extra damage from entering stealth because we're gonna be moving and dealing so much damage we will never enter stealth. So there is gonna be times that we do, but the majority of the time we don't. We care about this because of the plus one to all passives, which is gonna help us deal even more damage and make our character better. Next, Fist of Fate. You need to triple crit, crit strike chance. You need to get 95% roughly critical strike chance on this build because we do everything with crit, so you gotta get there. So the way that this is calculated is I have a crit chance of 68% total on my sheet, and then when I evade, or excuse me, let me let me go back over here. When I evade, it'll go up. Okay, so you'll see my crit chance go up from 68%. Right, you'll see me evade. And you see my crit chance goes up to 76%. Now, while war, how do you get the other 20% to get to 90? Well, when you dodge, remember on your key pass, or one of your passives here, when you dodge, you get 20% extra crit strike chance for three seconds. So... You're going to hit to that 90%. I think mine's at 96% there. So you will get it. So you need to get as high crit chance as possible. We do this from our gloves and both of our rings. Okay, get GA crit strike rings. And then GA crit on your gloves. Triple crit it and you will be fine. Um, we don't care about attack speed. We don't care about lucky hit or the chance for crowd control. Um, make sure if you are going to do Fist of Faith that you get a very high power. Now, if you do not have Fist of Fate, you can use regular gloves and put Conceited on it, put the Conceited power on it, and then again, just get GA crit chance on your gloves and triple crit it. Next on the pants. Okay, we are using Menacing for even more damage because Scourge, right? You need to get triple crit on maximum resolve stacks. This build resolves on doing so much damage if you have max resolve stacks. You need to have at least 30 on the build. I have 32 total. Okay, you can see down here I have 32 maximum resolve stacks. So you need to triple crit. All right, next we got boots, apprehension. I triple crit my evade so that way I can do it. Otherwise, what you would do is if you have the GA, you would just crit um, evade cooldown once and then try to double crit on scourge size. You want the pole arm for the vulnerable damage. Excuse me, not block chance. You want the vulnerable for pull for um, vulnerable damage. Now we do attack a little bit slower, but you want the pole arm for the vulnerable damage. Excuse me. And then on here, you want to get um, dexterity, max life, and then 
the percent GA on damage is fine, but you want that to be critical strike damage. So I still need to find a a one with a GA crit on the uh like this one would be fine too. Like I could take this one and just re-roll the uh lucky hit to critical strike damage, but you definitely want to have a critical strike damage over this. So definitely get that. Uh, next in the amulet, we are doing, inter or excuse me, the power, we're doing redirected force. This is going to give you a lot of damage based on your, uh, block chance. Uh, then we got interdiction. Okay. Uh, we gain 23% block chance per resolve stack, 32 times 23%. Huge. It's a lot of damage. Um, in the amulet in particular, you are going to need GA total armor because we need to hit a 5,000 armor threshold. Okay. So I'm a little short, but... When I pop an incense, excuse me, when I pop an incense, and this is the way to do it, unless you have GA armor rolls in your gear, I don't, but this will put me to 5,000 with this incense, perfectly fine. 5,000 is the armor cap, that's what you, what you want to get to. Then you do want to triple crit the maximum resolve stacks here. I only double crit, but you want to get that. Next, you want to get rid of the maximum life, and you want to get the, uh, you want to get the brilliance passive on there because more brilliance gives us more damage i don't have one so i'm just rocking max life for now uh on the rings unyielding again with the chris strike chance gorilla skill damage increases our weapon damage to maximum of 1500 and then we got soothsayers for the um when you cast an incarnate skill enemies around you become vulnerable killing enemies while they're vulnerable echoes and it makes everything else um take damage so very strong here again we're going to want storm feathers potency um, these are exactly the same except for the hunters. If you need more cooldown, take a uh, defensive cooldown instead of hunter, and then you're fine. Um, we want uh, the skulls in all the pieces for more armor. Amethyst in here for barrier generation and our two gear pieces. Now, our, our um, runes are Bakza. Bakza, -z -z whatever it is. So we travel 25 meters, then we invoke Concussive Stomp. Super easy when we're evading. And then we have... Um, Sem Ja, so cast evade six times, and then we get teleport, which I think is awesome. It makes the build move and play very, very smooth. It's a little chaotic to control, but otherwise you guys are good to go. Now, I do want to make an emphasis here right now that you need to get a max power. Obviously, everybody wants max powers, but this build is very dependent on having max interdiction, max redirected force, okay, and then max soothsayers, all right? This is very important. You need to have these, okay? In particular, interdiction and redirected force. Very, very important to get max powers on those. You will see a huge damage increase when you have those maximum powers. So make sure you get them. I think in the marketplace, they're selling for billions. So if you have the money, go get one. Or if your friend's got one, get it. But you do 100% need max uh, interdiction and max redirected force for this build to feel very, very good. All right. Um, next, Spear Hall, we got Eagle because this is where our feathers and all our damage is going to come through. Um, when we when we pump everything up, our, our Storm Feathers is what's going to deal all the damage, which is great. And then we got Maximum Resolve stacks for um, Gorilla on the second half so we can deal even more damage, right? Now, uh, into the Paragon board. All this is going to be linked down in the description below, guys. Um, the main glyphs that we're using is Colossal for more damage for Resolve. Uh, Fulminate for more damage, uh, Jagged Plume for more uh, spawn, uh, Storm Feather um, damage and movement speed, Spear for more damage for Crit Strikes, and then Talon for even more damage for Crit Strikes because we are using Eagle Skills. The board is down in the description, guys. Now, I will tell you that this board is up to Paragon 260, okay? So if you guys are less than 260 Paragon, then you could just take away the excess, but it will go up to 260 um, while you're doing this, Okay. So the build is very, very strong, very, very easy to play, very, very fast, okay? So I'm going to show this off really quick. Again, I don't have the bestest of best gear. Um, we will teleport over to Carriger, and I will show you some buffs that you guys need to put on for your build just to make it move even better and do the maximum amount of damage. You should have enough resources for these buffs, but if you don't, then that's okay. So in your potions, you're going to want maximum uh, life potion. So Elixir of Fortitude 2. This is going to get us to our total threshold of 25,000. This will go up three more thousand when I'm actually fighting, which is great. I think I actually go to 26,000. 
Again, the the Song of the Mountain, which puts us over the top. And then we have Chorus of War, which is going to increase our all stats and crit strike damage, which is great. And then we're doing Ready Main Buzz for more max life, uh, which is fantastic. This will just give us a bunch. And then, of course, you can pop any obel that you wish. I'm just going to pop the Tormented one. And then you guys are good to go. So let's go in here. Let's go do a 100 to show you guys. I hope that I can do this in one minute just to showcase. But it should be pretty fun. Now, I will give you a tip right here at the end. You'll see how uh, easy it is to actually run the uh, to, to do the evades. But you're literally just going to smash everything. And that's it. You just spam all your buttons. That's it. And you just destroy everything. This map is not the best one, but it is what it is. It's not the best map, but we will we will do our best. And hopefully we can do this for you guys. It's probably going to be a little over a minute, but that's all right. We're okay. Yeah, I'm back. I'm backtracking now. I'm so bad at this game. Yeah, you never have to worry about actually running out of evades. You can see that I don't. We're just about at a minute, guys. So it's going to be a little bit over. But you can see, like, how chaotic it is to run the build. You're kind of evading just, like, all over the place. It's a little tough to control, but once you get, like, the hang of it, it's not too bad. Once I get, like, the triple crits on my resolve and stuff, then we should be able to hit a minute. But I will show you that you can still do this very, very quickly. I don't want people to, like, go into the comments and be like, well, he didn't do it in a minute. Well, yeah, I mean, we still got to work on the build. That's why it's so dependent. Um, there is some creators that have this build completely maxed um, and are doing this in a minute. So we're we're at two minutes roughly on 100. So get in here. You just smash everything. It can be very tough to control. So I'm just going to grab the, uh, the tributes, the Artificer Stone. We'll go level this up. Make sure all your glyphs are leveled, guys, of course. So just to showcase a little bit more here. So if you do not or cannot do the 100s yet, this build is specifically designed for me to get Paragon. Okay, so I want Paragon levels. So you want to come in and you want to do, okay, if I'm not doing 100s in <clears throat> a minute, let, then we go to 95s and then you go to 90s. So we're going to do it again just so you guys can see this really quickly. Um, but the build is very, very fun to play. You kill everything super fast. It makes it makes it makes it just really fun to have something, especially from like the start when we had this build, and you know, of course, it got deleted, right? It just went away, which is kind of a bummer, you know, at the beginning. So you are still evade canceling to some degree, but you know, it, it's fine. It's fine. It was stupid. The stupid um, purple guys really really do it they're a real bummer man <laughs> and some of these maps are really just going to be bad for you the best maps if you get them while you're running this is to just get um the open world maps because all the doors and stuff are a real pain they're a real pain man it really slows the build down a lot you know like the stuff like this you know i'm not gonna i gotta climb down and do all that stuff but once you get like to an open area, then it can be, then it's very fun, right? You just destroy everything. And you're crushing in minutes, man. You're just crushing. So 95s seem to be my sweet spot right now. And you just, you just destroy, man. You just destroy everything in the game. So you really want to aim for that minute, that minute run. Sometimes you'll go a few seconds over. Sometimes you'll be a few seconds faster, etc. 
So one last tip before we end the video, guys. So I hope you guys have been watching this whole time and you guys really enjoy it. Hopefully you can put this together. The planner will be down in the description, okay? So the way that I evade very easily is go into my settings, control. I come down to evade and I have mouse wheel up and then the other side is mouse wheel down. So whenever I do mouse wheel up and down, is how I evade, as opposed to just like pressing a button and spamming. It's very, very relaxing. And every time I do it, I it just, you know, I'm barely moving my, my mouse wheel up and down, and then I just evade. So it's very, very comfortable. It makes it to where I'm not like smashing one button constantly, and it makes the evades way smoother. So guys, make sure you do that. But yeah, this is the build, man. We've been working on this for like five days to get this together just to showcase this to you guys. Um, but yeah, man, there's still so much work I need to do on this build. I need a new amulet. I need to triple uh, triple crit on resolve. Um, the I still need to triple crit on my fist of fate. But I think I've got it to a point where like the XP per hour that I'm getting from farming like 95s in a minute is just really nice. And I'm just like going through them over and over and over again. So right now i'm pretty happy with where it is um the only other thing that i am striving for is to get that ga shaco so if you guys got one kudos to you uh, that makes playing this build much easier but the extra ranks to brilliance in here would be huge i just have not found another ga total armor uh so if i find one then i'm gonna work on that uh because the extra ranks to brilliance is a lot of damage so, all right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys stick to the end. Like the video, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys have any tips, maybe there's something I missed, etc. I'm always open-minded to improve builds. So hopefully this one will work for you guys. Just know that it does take a lot of time to get this thing together. Um, and it's very gear dependent and very specific categories on here. So just make sure you do that. All right, guys, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.